Go. Good morning, geometry class, 10th, 11th grade. I uh, hope everyone's having a great day today, enjoying our quarantine. What's this, week number two? So, uh, we got a couple more weeks doing this. So, I hope everyone uh, is getting rest. I hope my prayer is that everybody is working hard. And uh, some of you guys and girls have not returned your geometry quiz or your homework. And so that's a zero until you get that stuff turned in. Uh, Liam Lord, make sure that's turned in. Uh, David Weber, Bobby Huntenlock, all Caleb Tomlinson, make sure your homework is turned in, okay? Don't wanna miss um, Friday's class. Uh, hopefully Friday we have a special guest visitor to come read our trivia question. So you don't wanna miss Friday class, all right? Remember, first person to call to text me and get the right answer will get uh, a, a surprise for that day, all right? So we're gonna pray. We're just gonna do a quick review. Some qu students had some questions over some of their homework. Uh, we'll we'll de uh, dive into some of those questions. Uh, review the checkup. Everyone did excellent job. Those who turned in your quizzes, excellent job there. And then we'll get into our new subject for this evening. So let's pray and, and we'll get started. Dear Jesus, anoint our time together. Give us wisdom. Without your help, we can do absolutely nothing. The students to work hard, to do their part, to be diligent, and uh, to put in the time and the effort and that they may see the blessings and the rewards. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we're going to open up to page 24. A couple students had some questions about that. I uh, just want to quickly reiterate some of the three three special cases of right triangles. If we're trying to figure out the length of the sides of a triangle, the length of the sides of the triangle, we would use the Pythagorean theorem. And so since uh, we have the Pythagorean theorem. How about we have Joey uh, give us the Pythagorean theorem, and then we'll have Caleb Tomlinson follow up. Joe, what's the Pythagorean theorem? Good. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So that's if we want to find the lengths of a right triangle, the length of the sides of a right triangle. Then we learned about the 30-60 right triangle theorem. The 30-60 right triangle theorem. So I want to read that again. You'll find that on page 23. So turn back to your textbooks, page 23. Theorem 96. Theorem 96 states, if the acute angles of a right triangle have the measures of 30 and 60 degrees, then the hypotenuse is twice as long as the shorter length. So the hypotenuse, remember our letters that represent a right triangle. And so we have A, B, and C. C represents the hypotenuse. A will represent the shorter leg. And uh, B will represent the longer leg. So the hypotenuse is twice as long as the shortest leg. So that would be 2 times A. And then we have the longer leg is the square root of 3 times the length of the shorter leg. The longer leg is the square root of three times the length of the shorter leg. All right, these must be memorized. Make sure you highlight those. Make sure you're studying those, okay? And then we looked at the isosceles right triangle theorem. And since we're in an isosceles right triangle, we have two congruent sides, all right, an isosceles triangle. The angles, again, are 45 and 45. All we need to do to find the, uh, you'll see, turn your books to page number 25. You'll see theorem 97. All we need to do is find the square root, root the square root of two times the length of either leg. It says in an isosceles right triangle, the hypotenuse is the square root of two times the length of either leg. So simply the square root of two times the length of either leg. And there you go. There's your special case in there. So with that, page 26, uh, some students had, well, let me go back. I'm sorry. Page 24, a student had a question. I just simply want to cover this one. 24, number 8. Page 24, number 8. All right, and so we have this triangle here. Okay, you see it's an upside-down yield sign in your book. And uh, what we have is uh, they're giving us the hypotenuse. We want to find the length of A and the length of B. B, okay, and so obviously the equations for a 30-60 right triangle, uh, C equals 2A and B equals A times the square root of 3. So since we already have A, I want to look for, or C, excuse me, I want to look for the letter A. So we want to find the shortest side, so I'm just going to simply take what is given to me, C equals 2A, and I'm going to plug what I do have. So we have the number 5, so C is 5, so Okay, 
phi equals 2a. Okay. Now, the directions here say uh, leave radicals in simplest radical form uh, if that is necessary. Okay. So now, let's divide. We want to get a by itself. So let's divide both sides by 2. So a equals, and simply we're going to divide 5 divided by 2. And 5 divided by 2 is simply... 2.5, 2.5 there. Okay, now once we find the length of A, we now must find the length of the longer side. So we're gonna plug it in here. So B equals, okay, 2.5 to the square root of three. 2.5 to the square root of three. Now what we, would, what we could do there is you could also leave it in in the fraction form and say 5 over 2 or 5 times the square root of 3 over 2. We can leave it as that answer as well. So um, that's there. there's your answer there. Uh, that was Hannah for you, number 8. Okay, so if you have any further questions, uh, feel free to ask. All right, now let's look at number 20. Turn the page here. Okay, if you turn your page, look at page number 20. Six together, we're gonna to do 11 through 13 together, okay? Page 26, 11 through 13, okay? So hopefully everybody's there. All right, so let's look at number 11. Number 11, all right, we have A, B, C, and number 11, we have C is the square root of three over two. Since this is an isosceles right triangle, we're gonna use the isosceles right triangle theorem. So C equals A uh, times the square root of 2. Now we already have C. We need to find the length of either leg. Okay, so we're going to use the length A there. So I'm just going to simply write it over here. So the square root of 3 over 2 is equal to A times the square root of 2. Okay, so all I did was I replaced, I substituted Three, the square root of 3 over 2 for the letter C here. Now we're going to solve. So I want to get A by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by the square root of 2. All right, so now we have, all right, A is equal to the square root of 3 over 2 divided by the square root of 2. Now this is a complex fraction. Okay, so we have a fraction within a fraction. So remember, this second line here is a dividing line. It is a division bar, so we're just going to simply divide. Now, I'm going to do this longhand so you can see how that is worked out. So we're going to go the square root of 3 over 2 divided by the square root of 2 over 1. Remember, all this means right here, division bar. Now, does anyone remember how we divide fractions? All right, how about we have Hannah? How do we divide fraction Hannah? And then how about we'll have Caleb Tomlinson follow us up there? Good, so we must invert the second fraction. So we're gonna quickly invert that. We're gonna go and then multiply times one over the square root of two. Now we're just gonna multiply, okay? So square root of three times one equals the square root of three over 2 times the square root of 2 is 2 to the square root of 2. Now, we're not finished yet because how about we have Josh Baruch? What's wrong with this fraction, Josh Baruch? Look closely. Get your glasses on. Look closely. Here we go. Katie, why don't you follow up with it? Good. We have a radical sign in the denominator. We can't have a radical sign. And so we must remove that. In order to remove that, we're going to multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of 2. Since these are both under the radical sign, we can multiply them, correct, Brandon? So what's the square root of 3 times the square root of 2? Excellent. The square root of 6 over, all right, Brandon, finish it up for me. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4. Very good. Now, what is the square root of 4? 2. Good. Since I have a whole number here, I'm going to take my two whole numbers, multiply them together. So 2 times 2 is 4. So for number 11, your answer should be the square root of 6 
over 4. The square root of 6 over 4. Okay? With that, let me erase that. We'll do number 12. Okay? Number 12, we have, okay, similar setup here. So the square root of 5 over 7. All right, so now we're just going to plug and chug here. So the square root of 5 over 7 is equal to A times the square root of 2. Divide both sides by the square root of 2. So A is equal to, again, since we have this a fra a complex fraction, what do we want to do here? Katie Strzelecki, good morning, Kate. Hope everything's doing, uh, everyone's doing well. Uh, Kate, what do we do since we have this complex fraction? The second bar is a division bar. Very good. So again, we're going to set this up. So I'm just going to write it out longhand so you can see here. All right. Divided by the square root of 2 over 1. Again, we must, in division, we want to invert that second fraction there. So I'm just going to come right alongside here and go the square root of 5 over 7 times 1 over the square root of 2. Now just simply let's multiply together. 5 times 1 is the square root of 5. 7 times the square root of 2 is 7 to the square root of 2. Can't have a radical in my denominator. Is that correct? So Hannah, all right, then we'll follow up with Emmy. How's it going, Em? All right, so what do I do there? We need to multiply, very good, the denominator and the numerator by that radical. So 5 times 2 is square root of 10 over, now you can only multiply radicals, remember that. So 2 times 2 is square root of 4, all right? And now when we find what is the square root of 4, why don't we have Liam? Square root of 4 is? And we'll follow Bobby. Two. Good. So get my whole numbers, multiply them. So we have 10 over, the square root of 10 over 14. And since this is an isosceles triangle, A and B will be the same answer there. Okay? Let's do the last one, number 13. Okay? Number 13. All right. That's important not to be intimidated by radical signs. Number 13. So again, A, B, C. We know C is the square root of 11 over 4. Square root 11 over 4. And again, we're just going to simply here write our equation down. So the square root of 11 over 4 is equal to A to the square root of 2. All right, divide both sides by the square root of 2. So, A is equal to the square root of 11 over 4 divided by the square root of 2. Now, finish that up for me. Take a few minutes, uh, a few about a minute, finish this up for me. So make sure you do the proper division. Once you do that proper division, then make sure you rationalize your denominator. Well, if you rationalize your denominator, you can give me the answer. So I'll give you about 30 seconds to do that now. Okay, who's got the answer? All right, so we have the square root of 22 over 4 is the correct answer. The square root of 22, I mean, uh, the final answer, let me write this down here. We'll erase all this. The square root for number 8 is the square root of 22 over 8. Great job, everybody. Hope everyone did, did well there, okay? Now we're going to go to... After our checkup, we're going to pick up on page 31 tonight, page, thir page 31, uh, our new topic. And so let's look at trigonometry. Trigonometry, uh, boy, this will be an interesting topic here. Let me clear off our board. Okay, 
trigonometry, page 31. All right, so we're gonna look at the tangent ratio and what is trigonometry. So geometry in itself is the study of polygons. Now a triangle is a polygon. In trigonometry, we are basically just studying triangles. The word trigonometry uh, basically de derives from the Greek words, which meaning the study of triangles. The study of triangles, that's all that means. And so uh, we have various ratios to help us find the length of sides and then also the measure of angles of those sides. And so uh, you'll see the second paragraph, you wanna highlight the second paragraph, the first sentence in that second paragraph, that's something you need to know for later on. A trigonometric ratio is the ratio of the length of two sides of a right triangle. And I remember we've been studying ratios and proportions in the last uh, few weeks there. And so a trigonometric ratio is the length of two sides of a right triangle. Three of these ratios are, you want to highlight these again in the very next sentence, three of these ratios are the tangent, Okay, it is abbreviated by the word tan, okay? And then we have the sine, again, abbreviated by the word sin, okay? Not sin, but that's the abbreviation. You'll see these on your calculator as tan, tangent, sin is the abbreviation for sine. And then the last one here is cosine and the abbreviation for cosine is cos so you'll know uh, they're the three tangent ratios that we're going to focus and learn in these next few uh, pages okay and so let me draw here we have a right triangle okay we have a right triangle we have we'll call this a b and c a b and c here <clears throat> now remember Okay, real fast. Remember this. Thing. Let's remember the parts of a right triangle. So AC and BC are called what in a right triangle? How about we have Brandon? What do we have, Brandon? And then we'll have um, who I haven't called yet? Oh, Preston, my man, Preston. What's up, buddy? I haven't picked on you yet today. Uh, what is line segment AC and line segment BC called in the right triangle? Legs, good, so these are legs. All right, we're gonna just print here legs. All right, legs. And then what is the longest side of a right triangle called? It is located opposite of the right angle. How about we have Chris Robb? What is the side opposite of the right angle called? Good, it is called the hypotenuse, the hypotenuse, good. And so the first ratio we're looking for, uh, we're gonna look at three ratios here. We're gonna look at um, the tangent, the cosine, and the sine uh, ratio. And uh, one of the ways I, I've learned these, and uh, I think it's simple, I do it, learn it two ways, okay? We could say here, abbreviations, I call this Chief Sokotoa. Can you say that? Chief Sokotoa. And here's how we remember these trigonometric ratios. So SOH would be the sine, okay? And this is the hypotenuse, okay? Uh, and so the sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. The cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And the tangent is the opposite over adjacent sides. So again, chief soka toa. Good way to memorize these because you have to memorize these trigonometric ratios. Another way that I rem memorize them is just a, a little sentence I put together and I put some old horse called another horse taking oat away. Uh, I try to say that one. Why don't you say that with me um, together? Right class, get ready to say that, ready? Some old horse caught another horse taking oat away. I don't know how you want to memorize them, but there's two simple ways there. You got to memorize these trigonometric ratios. The first one we're going to focus on today is the tangent ratio. The tangent ratio. So uh, let's get ready here. The tangent ratio is, okay, I'm going to write this down here. All right, the tangent, 
all right, is equal to, basically this is the tangent of an angle, okay, is equal to, here's the ratio, you want to memorize this ratio, the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the adjacent side. The opposite over an adjacent. Now, what is that? What does that mean? Okay. So, looking at this triangle here. All right. I look at this triangle here. Okay. Right angle. We're going to say uh, this is A, B, C. Okay. If I'm, if I want to know the measure of angle A, so let's call this A. We're going to call this in here theta. That's a Greek letter theta which is the symbol for the measure of an angle. So if I want to find the letter, the measure of angle A, okay? So the tangent of angle A, what would, it, what would the ratio be, okay? The length of the opposite side over the length of the adjacent side. You say, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm glad you asked. So what side is opposite of angle A? Gabe, what? Side is opposite, so good. So side BC is opposite. So then that's the opposite side. I'm going to go BC over, okay? Now, what's the side adjacent to that angle? Which would be AC. So BC over AC. Now, if we had numbers there, we'd simply divide those numbers. Once we divide those numbers, we'll get a, a, a decimal, and we're just simply write that as our answer. Now, what if I want to find, okay, let's change it here. Okay, looking at the right, what if I want to find angle B? What side is opposite angle B, Joe? Angle B is here, side AC, so very good. So we would have AC over, and what side is adjacent? Now remember, this is always the hypotenuse. So if that is out of the question for the tangent, we're not looking at the hypotenuse. The side adjacent would be side BC. And there's your ratio, and there's your ratio. Let's practice, turn to page, page number 32. Okay, page number 32. Okay, let's look at here. All right, we have a right angle. Okay, it's actually in the form of a staircase. So you'll see there, we're going to call this A, B, C. There's our right angle. Now, class, if this is our right angle, what does that make A, B, class? G, what do you have? Good. We call this the uh, hypotenuse. Now, since we're talking about the tangent, we're only looking for the opposite over adjacent. So uh, let's get your calculators out, everybody. And let's look at number 32, number 1. Page 32, number 1. Okay, if BC is 9 and AC is 17, what is the, what is the tangent of angle A? Now, remember, okay, Chief Sokotoa, all right, T O. A, uh, A, T O A stands for the tangent is the opposite side over adjacent side, okay? So here it is. So I'm just going to put tan of angle A is equal to, now if this is the angle, where's the side opposite? M, what do you have? Very good. 9 over, what's the side adjacent? M. Very good. Remember, the adjacent side is always the side that shares that common vertex. So 9 over 17. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take your calculator out and just simply divide. 9 divided by 17. And what do we get? Now, remember, if you look up in our directions there, it says round off to four decimal places. All right? So for number 1. Number 1. All right? Everybody get your calculators out. What do we have? I'm going to read the answer here, 0 0.5294, 0.5294 is the correct answer, all right, how about tangent of angle B, okay, again, so for the tangent of angle B is side opposite over adjacent, so what's the side opposite of angle B? 
17. Very good. And what's the side adjacent? Nine. So again, divide 17 divided by nine, and we have our answer, which is 1.8. 889. That is the measure of angle, tangent of angle A, and then the tangent of angle B. Any questions? Pretty simple. Let's do number three. All right, let's do number three. Okay, same triangle here. All right, number three. We would say BC is three, and, oops, sorry. BC is 0 0.9. AC is? 8.2. Okay? All right, let's find the tangent of angle A. The tangent of angle A. How about we have Brandon? All right, so if we're looking for the tangent of angle A, Brandon, what's the side opposite of angle A? Good. So, tangent of angle A is equal to opposite over adjacent. And what would be the adjacent side, Brad? Very good. 8.2, get your calculator out, divide 0 0.9, divided by 8.2, and we have 0 0.1098, 1098, very good. Now, what's the, the tangent for angle B? All right, how about we have Josh Baruch. Josh, nice of you to join us today. Josh, angle B, what's the side opposite of angle B? 8.2, good. Divided by the side adjacent, 0.9. All right, get your calculator out. 8.2 divided by 0.9, and we have 9.1111. Good, any questions? If you have any questions, make sure you reach out to me through your Remind app, and I'll be glad to answer any questions that you may have, I want you to do for homework, page 32, I want you to do the evens. 30, 32, the evens. Now let's look at page 33. Page 33. I want you to draw your attention. I want you to get your geometry handbook out. Yes, the very geometry handbook that some of you have not filled out yet and returned to me. So make sure you send a picture to see that this is filled out. I want you to open up your geometry handbook and you're going to see a table back there. Okay, see this table here? All right, you're going to see on the, the right up at the top here, you have in the very right-hand column, you'll have angle. These are all different angle measures. You'll see that all the way up to 90 degrees. And then in the second column, we have sine, th the third column, cosine, and the, the fourth column, tangent. And then it repeats on the uh, left hand side of the table. So we could use this table up to at least up to 90 degrees and find out what the angle is based on whatever the tangent, cosine, or sine number, or if we have the numbers, we could also find the measure of the angle. So for example, okay, uh, for the problem that we just did on number, uh, let's look at number three, we had the tangent of angle A was 1.098. 1.098. So what I would do, I would go to my tangent column, and I would go to 1.098. So you'll see here 1, 1 point, is it, uh, 0 0.17, 0 0.19. What did I say? What did I say what number that was? I quickly forgot. 0 0.10, 0 0.1098. So 0.1, okay. All right, so point one zero five one. Okay, and if you, so if you look at this chart, you just would simply go to this column and then go down to the angle column and right where they meet, you would find the measure of the angle. So let's practice that, okay? You'll see on page 33, look at 33 here. All right, so using the table, all right, on number one, tangent A is equal to 2.7475. 2.7475, okay? So you want to go to your tangent table here, all right? So we're going to look at 2.74. So here's 2.0, 2.1, 2.3, all the way down. Here it is, 2.47475. Once I find that, I'm going to go down that, that angle column here, 
And right where the two meet, we have 69 degrees. 69 degrees. So that's what we would put in the bank, the blank there. So the tangent of angle A, all right, 2.7475 is 69 degrees. How about look at number three? Number three, all right, zero, point zero three zero zero. Point zero three, okay? So we'll go to my chart here. We have point zero three. Where's point zero three tangent column? Point zero three, forgot the number that fast. Zero, zero. Okay, point zero three, zero five. All right, so, all right, now we would take, since it's the number closest to that number, we're just gonna come right over here, and we're gonna say that that measure of the angle would be 17 degrees, approximately 17 degrees. And that's how you use your table. All right, so I want you to do that um, for page 33. I want you to do that through one through eight. One through eight. Now, uh, let's go to finish here on page 34. Page 34 at this time. So let's get there. All right, use our table. So once we find the measure, we're going to use the table to find what the tangent is. Okay, so page 34, number nine. So our formula is, again, tangent of angle. All right, it's equal to the side opposite over the side adjacent. All right, let me redraw our triangle. Okay, all right, we have A, B, C. This is our hypotenuse. Let's look at number nine, all right? So if in a right triangle, we are given the measure of an angle, okay, and the length of one leg, we still could find the length of the other leg using trigonometry. So for number nine, we have, okay, BC, AC equals 12, and the measure of angle A equals 25. Even though, okay, I have one angle and I have one side, I can still use trigonometry to find the length of the other side. Since we're dealing with here, okay, look what we're given, angle A, and we're given the side opposite and the side adjacent, all we're going to do is simply plug in the numbers that are given to us and chug out the answer. So, all right, let's look here. So tangent of angle A, so I'm going to put here, all right, we already know we have 25 degrees, okay, 25 degrees. So for, again, page 34, follow along with me, the tangent of 25 degrees is equal to the side opposite over the side adjacent. So if this is angle A, what's the side opposite class? Okay, opposite over adjacent. So, all right, if opposite is BC, we have that, we'll call that X, and AC is, side adjacent, is 12. Let's solve. Okay, let's simply solve this problem here. All right, so we have, Okay, let's use our table. What is the tangent? So get your table out. All right, how about we have Chris Robb. What is the tangent of angle 25? So come on your table here. Find the measure of 25 degrees. Go across to the tangent. And what do you find yourself there? So 25. All right, so our tangent is 0.4. Six six three is equal to x over twelve. All right. So, how do I get x by itself, class? All right. So, how about we have Emily? All right. Then we'll follow it up with Katie Strzelecki. How do I get x by itself? M. Good. K. Good. Multiply both sides by twelve. X is equal to, now what is, get your calculator out, 12 times 0.4663. And we should have the length of BC, which is 5.60. 5.60. All right, let's do two more, and then we'll finish for this evening. Look, look at number 11, okay? Let's do number 11. Okay, number 11 is, 
Okay, still looking for BC. AC is 3, and the measure angle B equal, oh, let's do number 10. All right, I'm going to break my code down. I'm going to do number 10. So AC is 3, and the measure angle B equals 48 degrees. Okay? All right, here's our formula up here. So we're looking for the tangent. So the tangent of 48 degrees is equal to, okay, since we're looking for angle B, here's angle B. What's the side opposite, class? Chris Robb, what's the side opposite? Preston Klus could follow up after. So the side, if this is angle B, the side opposite would be AC. So AC, 3 over side adjacent, which we don't know what that is. That is BC, which would be X. Take your table out. Oh, what did I do with my table? All right. I want you, Gabe, I want you to look for 48 degrees, Gabe, on your table. And then once you find, locate 48 degrees, I want you to go all the way across to the tangent column. And you should have what? 1.1106. Good. 1.1106 is equal to 3 over x. All right, now we want to get the letter x by, our, by itself. So uh, what can we do here to get x by itself? So let's do this. Divide, multiply, excuse me, both sides by x. That cancels out. So 3 is 1.11016 x. How do I get x by itself, class? Divide, good, 1.1106. 1.1106. All right, get your calculator out. 3 divided by 11.06, 1.1106 equals, let's put it over here, 2.70. Make sure you copy this work down. Very important uh, for practice. We're going to do one more as I said, and then we'll finish for today. Let's do number 13. Number 13. Okay, the measure of angle. All right, so number 13, we have BC is 2. AC, we don't know. And the measure of angle A equals 14. All right, we'll finish with this one here. So the tangent, all right, of 14 degrees is equal to, all right class, we're looking for angle A, so the side opposite would be, remember, opposite over adjacent, BC over side adjacent, which is X. All right, get your table out. All right, how about we have Liam, find angle 14, 14 degree angle, I want you to go all the way over to the column there on the left. I want you to read me the tangent. So what do you have there? Good. Point 0.2493 equals 2 over x. Okay. Got to get rid of the fractions. So we're going to multiply by our denominator here. All right. So we have point 0.2493x. Then we want to divide both sides by point 0.24. 93, and so x equals, get your calculator out, what's your answer for number 13? x equals 8.02 is the correct answer there, 8.02. Hope you have, guys get your homework done. Be sure your homework is in, all right, before the weekend. Homework in before the weekend. And so your homework is, make sure your handbooks are up to date. You're going to do page 32. You're doing the evens. Page 33, you're finishing page 33. And then also page 34, you're going to finish that page as well. This is the trigonometric ratio of the tangent opposite over adjacent. Have a blessed and safe day. I'll see you on Friday.